Hi there, I'm Logan Medish, and this is High Caliber History. Today, we're going to take a look at a really special Beretta Model 1934 that has some really cool and specific World War II history. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as you would expect from the name of the model of the pistol, the Beretta Model 1934 is introduced in 1934, and it is chambered in what they refer to as 9mm Corto, which we here uh, know as 380 Auto. And the basic design of the pistol is introduced again in 1935, uh, and it's the model 1935 at that point, uh, and it is chambered in 32 ACP. Now, like I mentioned, this is the 380 version of that firearm, and it has a seven round magazine here, uh, a little bit of a, a finger extension on the grip here for a little extra added purchase. Open sides on there, you can see the spring inside of the magazine. And this pistol is a neat design in the fact that it is essentially a direct ancestor of the Beretta 92, which of course goes on to become the M9 and adopted as the service pistol for the United States military. Uh, and you can see a lot of that lineage in this pistol here. A couple of neat things to point out uh, on this gun is the way they did the dates. Uh, on the slide here. Sometimes you see them in Arabic numerals, sometimes you see them in Roman numerals, and on this particular example we, we see both, and it says 1942 XXI. Now, of course XXI is 21. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, what that has to do with is the uh, fascist era in Italy under Benito Mussolini and they adopted their own calendar, which started in 1922 when he came to power. And so day one on their fascist calendar is October 29th, 1922, and it counts forward from there. So that actually gives us a really tight window to date this particular firearm because of the way the calendar runs uh, and the fact that there's also a traditional Arabic year on here as well. And that's because we have 1942, but also 21. Well, if you add 20 to 1922, you get 42, which is the date on the gun, but this is 21, so that would be 43. Well, how does that work? Well, that's because it means this gun was made sometime after October 29th, 1942, and December 31st, 1942. That's the only window that this pistol would fit in to be made uh, in order to have both the 1942 and the 21 dates on there. So it's really neat to be able to narrow it down uh, and list this pistol in a very short window between the end of October and the end of December, 1942. Just like on most traditional European arms of the time, we have a heel magazine release on the bottom of the frame. And so in order to load the pistol, you have to depress that heel. And then the mag goes in, locks into place. Another interesting feature about this particular model is the grips. Now these are plastic grips, and it was not uncommon to see uh, plastic grips coming into style on firearms at this time, but there's a problem with this plastic, and it's the fact that it's kind of brittle. It is susceptible to changes in temperature, uh, and it's just not nearly as durable as the plastics that we have today. It was prone to breaking, chipping, warping, uh, and so the Italians actually came up with a really ingenious way to help combat some of the chipping. Uh, and that's by putting a metal backing onto these grips. So we're gonna take them off of this gun and I will show you that in just a second. So now that we have the grip panel off here, uh, you can see inside the frame of the firearm uh, with the magazine inserted. Uh, and this is the grip facing forwards. Uh, but on the back, it has actually got a metal liner. And you can see here uh, in this circular cutout, 
the circle is actually a little bit off-centered from the metal cutout circle. Uh, and you can see on the edge here, we have this little lip, this metal lip that goes uh, all the way on the sides, on both sides. Uh, it does not extend onto the top or the bottom of the grip, but it wraps around the sides and holds nice and tight uh, and keeps it from cracking and keeps it from chipping, uh, as well as the fact that there is a little hook here on the metal uh, that actually when you put this onto the gun, it grips into the frame just a little bit uh, to help hold things nice and secure and snug onto the pistol. Now, the reason I purchased this pistol uh, is, is not so much because it's a remarkable example of the Model 1934. It, it, it's not. It's not in pristine condition. Uh, this leather braided lanyard is pretty cool. It's probably period to the gun. Uh, and of course, it came with a holster as well. But the really impressive thing and the reason why I bought this gun is because it has capture documents with it. Uh, there are actually two copies of the captured enemy equipment certificate, and there are actually three different copies of the customs declaration sheet. And this particular pistol uh, came over in the possession of Corporal Lewis Belcher, Lewis Belcher was born Christmas Day, 1923, in Pennsylvania. Uh, he was actually uh, living at 2014 18th Street in Altoona, Pennsylvania, when he was called up for service. Uh, he entered active duty on February 11th, 1943, in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Uh, and he was active for a total of 19 months stateside and 16 months overseas. And so when it came time to calculate his pension in 1950, uh, it was a total of $190 a month uh, because of the 19 months that he had in service in the States and an additional $240 for the 16 months active foreign service uh, for a total of $430 a month in his pension. Corporal Belcher was a participant in the Battle of the Bulge, serving as a tank commander, and he was the recipient of the Purple Heart, the Belgian Croix de Guerre, and the Luxembourg Liberation Medal and the European Theater Medal with three battle stars, as well as a number of additional decorations. Uh, this is information that I got from the family from his obituary, so um, I, I will leave the accuracy uh, of that up to that. Uh, I, I won't argue or debate that with anyone. It's interesting to note that when the paperwork was signed off on the Captured Enemy Equipment Certificates, uh, which were signed December 1st, 1945, uh, the officer that signed this, uh, these documents was a First Lieutenant Ralph J. Drake with the 202nd General Hospital. And the 202nd General Hospital was in France, and it was located just outside of Paris to the northwest. Uh, we can see it on the map here, located along the River Seine. So I don't know if... Uh, if Corporal Belcher was in the 202nd Hospital at that point, um, or if it just so happened that, uh, that the officer who signed off on it was there, uh, I, I really don't know. I don't have the history on that, um, but I just thought it was absolutely phenomenal to be able to put all of this history together in this little pistol with the capture documents and the holster, uh, and to be able to look up and put all of this history together. Um, Louis Belcher passed away March 8th, 2012 at the age of 88, uh, and he is buried in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Um, so I am very fortunate to have this in my collection. Uh, it's an awesome collection and conglomeration of, of personal history and World War II history, and I am honored to be the caretaker of this piece 
uh, for the time that I have it. So thanks for tuning into this episode of High Caliber History. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you right here on the next episode.